What is the proper mindset when you want to start afresh but things are holding you back? Brothers and sisters, Ms. Nina. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Alhamdulillahir rabbil alamin wa salatu wa salam ala rasuli ya kareem. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul uqdatam min lisani yafqahu qawli. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hi everyone, my name is Shazrina Azman from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, and I'm also known as Ms. Nina. And I just want to say Jazakumullahu Khairan to the organizers uh, from the Connect Institute Philippines for inviting me here today. Alhamdulillah, it's such a blessing to be with you uh, for the Connecting the Pearls conference. Alhamdulillah, I pray that my sharing will be one of benefit. Uh, the topic that I will be um, talking about is called um, starting fresh and I feel that it is a perfect topic for the time that we're in since we are at the end of the year and we're heading into 2022 and I'm sure most of us are really excited to get into the new year you know with like new ambitions new goals uh, and of course most importantly to start new and to, to start fresh um, and for those of you who do not know who I am let me just give you a quick background. Um, I'm from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Uh, I have been in the entertainment industry for pretty much most of my life. Uh, since I was eight years old, I've been involved with dancing and music and um, performing. And I became a rapper, you know, in my early teens. And professionally, I became a rapper, a dancer uh, at 16. And then I became a DJ as well after that. Um, and so I basically lived my life um, striving uh, to live this dream of wanting to be a big star on stage one day. Um, this eight-year-old girl's dream, right? And um, yeah, I worked my way towards that um, for a number of years. And uh, at the age of 33, that's when I realized my biggest dream, and that was to perform on, on MTV Live stage. And I had already... Um, collaborated with a number of artists like Flo Rider, Jay Park, Planet Asia, and a number of artists uh, from around the world. And um, yeah, that was my life. Music and deen. Music was my deen, not Islam. Even though I was born Muslim, I didn't practice it because I was so engulfed in the pleasures of dunya. And uh, the entertainment industry, music, movies, and all these things really had a hold on my heart and my mind. And so um, there was no, I didn't give much time or even effort to learning about the Dean at that time. So this was definitely before my Hijra. And so why am I talking about this? Because I feel that it is important for all of us to reflect upon our lives so that we can actually, you know, make a realization and acknowledgement that, well, you know what, I made mistakes, but now I want to move on. Now I want to become someone better. Now it's time for me to take control and to, you know, get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in control, but, you know, you're making a decision to get um, closer to Him. So, um, talking, going back to uh, my story, um, so I was surrounded by temptations, right? And one of the most difficult things a person can do is to let go of these temptations and vices and turn away from it and move towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, that is always the hardest thing because there's so many thoughts that come into our mind thinking like oh well if I if I leave this what are people going to say where am I going to earn my money you know there's just so many doubts but what we have to realize is that in order to turn a new leaf, we need to leave it. We need to hold on to Allah and leave it to Him. Because at the end of the day, He is the one who gives our risk. He is the one who guides us. Everything comes from Him. So there shouldn't be a fear of people, but that should, there should be a fear and hope. A fear of Allah and also a hope in His promises. Um, so yeah, I was surrounded by, and I was very much exposed to all of these vices and temptations at an early age. You know, drugs, alcohol, partying, um, you know, uh, this dating uh, um, culture, uh, music, um, and that was my life, you know, you would only live once, you, n you never think like, well, what's going to happen to me after I die, well, you know what, I'm still young, I'm s I can still do whatever I want, so I lived that life for such a long time, 
But what was it that woke me up? What was it that wanted me to start a new leaf? Well, in my early 20s, you know, I uh, dived into a very dark place because I was so addicted to all of these vices and temptations and addictions, right? Uh, and it brought me to a really low place where I fell into depression. I was always very anxious. I was um, really destroying myself, my health, my relationships with my family and also with friends. And I didn't even realize it. Um, so like, that one night was when I was just crying nonstop and my body was aching and my mind was just a, a blur and I think I was just so out of it and I felt like my heart was alive just enough to call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because I needed help and after that day I knew what I needed to do um, and that was to turn a new leaf, to, come up, to become a better person so, um, but that did not make me, you know, practice Islam 100% yet. I wasn't there yet. However, um, another big incident came into my life and when I was 27 years old, and that was when my brother passed away. That was a huge calamity for my family. But for me, when I reflect upon it now, it was definitely, you know, a blessing in disguise because it brought myself and my family closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I started asking the important questions that I missed out when I was younger. What's my purpose in life? It used to be music, it used to be partying, it used to be dunya. But now, there's more to life than that. It was such a huge wake-up call for me because I knew then that death is real. and It can happen to any one of us. And um, with that realization, I started to dig into the deen more. I started to make du'a more. I started to learn how to pray. I remembered the Afatiha and a couple of short surahs, you know, like the three calls. And um, that was the beginning of my journey of turning a new leaf. It takes, it doesn't, it doesn't take overnight to become someone new. It ta it's a process. It is a long process. And everyone's process is different and unique. And so we should never compare ourselves with anyone else because you are you and, you know, you are living your life. Um, so, yeah. Um, subhanallah. So, yes, I was very much surrounded by these temptations. So what got me away from them? Well, definitely um, the fear of death got me away from, from some of the vices. The, re the realization of that death is real and the realization that there's more to this life than that than just this dunya um, that there is uh, subhanallah but th at this time I didn't realize what the true purpose was this comes in later when I went for hajj uh, but anyway let's go back to that um, so then I got married after I went for hajj and that also alhamdulillah opened me up to the deen more I started to pray more con consistently um, and I was uh, invited by my mom to go to Hajj in 2013 uh, with my husband and Alhamdulillah we agreed and at that time I at um, you know she asked me again she asked me first in 2012 but I said no and then I said yes in 2013 because I knew it was time I knew it was time because there was one moment when I was on stage I can't remember which show it was and the spotlight was on me. I was doing my thing, singing, I was dancing, I was rapping. And, and uh, you know, I just felt like a robot. I felt like just my body was moving, but my heart and soul wasn't in it. I just felt, I thought to myself, I had this aha moment where I was like, wait, this is not me. I'm, you know, this is not what I want to do. I'm just faking it right now. And at that moment, I knew for real that my heart was really searching for something else and some something else to fulfill it. Little did I know that it was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the deen, the Quran and sunnah. So, um, hajj. Hajj was the next big factor that helped me turn a new leaf. And um, it was on the day of Arafah. And, uh, you know, before going to Hajj, I, I made the point that I wanted to learn how to read Quran again from Alif Bata from the beginning. And, uh, you know, a point of reflection here, it's never too late to learn, ever. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter where you're at. You know, it's never, ever too late to learn <laughs> because we still have time while our hearts are still beating. So 
if you've been wanting to learn Quran, if you've been wanting to learn more about the deen and you're shy because you're older or, you know, you're, you're not there or you're, you're, you have to start from zero, just go for it. There's nothing to be shy about at all, subhanAllah, and you will never regret it. So on the day of Arafah, you know, uh, I learned from the Ustaz there that, you know, for those who do Hajj that is mabrul, that is accepted, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will basically forgive you all of your sins. Like it's like a completely clean slate. Um, and when I heard that, I was like, whoa, this is my chance. I want to go and I really want to, you know, change. I really want to come back still the same Nina, Shazrina, but different. Um, I just don't want to be the same person. And so I went there with that intention. And on the day of Arafah, I, I saw, subhanAllah, everyone in the ihram making dua, making tawbah, making, you know, they're making, they're pleading to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive them. And I'm seeing everybody cry and I'm observing everyone. And that was the day I learned how to make tawbah. And I think that was the game changer for me because in order to make sincere tawbah, you have to strip down these layers of ego, arrogance, you know, of like, well, it's all about me. And that was the day I realized that it's not about me anymore. It's about Allah. It's about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's about me submitting to Allah. It's not about what I want anymore. It's about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants and for me to be able to fulfill what He wants. So that day I learned what it meant to be a true Muslim and that is somebody who submits completely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah for that experience. So yeah, Hajj was a full-on turn, um, you know, something that really helped me turn a new leaf, uh, start fresh. And, um, you know, coming from there, um, I just want to say to everyone here who's watching, you don't have to wait for Hajj to turn a new leaf. You can do it anytime, right now, after this sharing, tonight, tomorrow, anytime. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you if you turn to Him sincerely in sincere tawbah, with sincere tawbah. Because this is one of, one of the hadith that I really, really love. And it gives me so much hope every time I feel like I, I er, I've done a lot of wrong. And it just gives me hope that subhanAllah, Allah is so forgiving, He's so loving, He is all forgiving. And, you know, it makes me want to just keep on making tawbah. And that's the, the key, I think, to turning a new leaf. It's making tawbah. On the authority of Anas, uh, may Allah be pleased with him, who said, I heard the message of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa said, say, Allah the Almighty said, O son of Adam, so long as you call upon me and ask of me, I shall forgive you for what you have done, and I shall not mind. O son of Adam, were your sins to reach the clouds of the sky, and were you to ask, and were you then to ask forgiveness of me, I would forgive you. O son of Adam, were you to come to me with sins nearly as great as the earth, and were you to, to then face me, and were you then to face me, ascribing no partner to me, I would bring you forgiveness nearly as great as it. Um, it was related by at tirmidhi also by Ahmad ibn Hanbal. Um, so subhanAllah how amazing that is that hadith right it gives us so much hope so for those of you who want to start a new leaf who want to start afresh you don't have to wait for something bad to happen you can do it right now when everything's all good right and even if, if something good happens to you or something bad happens to you make these um, occurrences make these incidences or make these situations turn you back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always in ease and in hardship always 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 inshallah um, there's also another hadith that I want to share with you um, that uh, also gives me a lot of um, inspiration it is from uh, uh, Musan Ahmad where Abu Qatada reported that the Prophet Muhammad wasallam said verily you will never leave anything for the sake of Allah Almighty but that Allah will replace it with something much better so if there's anything that you're holding on to, something about the dunya, something, uh, something that you're addicted to, you know, make the intention right now to leave it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sake and He will give you so much more. And this will help you, this will help me turn a new leaf and start afresh inshallah. Whatever it is, whether it's being addicted to Netflix or social media or shopping or whatever it is, you know, it can be anything. But 
make the intention to leave it for Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And last but not least, as we end the year and go into 2022, um, Allah promises us a good life. Um, and uh, as long as we uh, do righteous, we do righteous deeds. And inshallah, He will reward us in this life and the next. And I'm going to leave you with this um, verse from Surah An Nahal, verse number 97. I'm just reading it in English. Um, it says, Whoever does righteousness, whether male or female, while he is a believer, we will surely cause him to live a good life. And we will surely give him their reward in the hereafter according to the best of what they used to do. So inshallah, as we head into 2022, I pray that all of us, including myself, will do our best to do righteous deeds, to um, come up with some goals that are akhirah related, and to make the intention to to do them sincerely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make it happen for 2022, right? Let go of anything that's holding you back, right? To turn a new leaf, to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because trust me, taking that step, and once you do take that step, you will never regret it. Um, so I guess that's it for me, inshallah. Jazakum lahu khairan once again to um, the organizers for inviting me here today. It really, really is such an honor. I was really nervous before I started recording this video. But you know what? I thought to myself, at the end of the day, it is Allah's plan. And there's hair in everything that is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's it for me, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Nothing can harm me if I hold on tightly to you